What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So, we're gonna check out John Cena reveals worst moments in WWE career, and we're also gonna talk about um, John Cena's uh, feud with The Rock and why it got so personal, why it got so heated. Uh, this is by uh, Not Sam Clips, uh, the interview he had on Sirius XM. Uh, definitely wanted to check out some of these uh, other clips as well from that interview. A lot of you guys wanted me to check out some more from that particular interview. And it, it's just dope to see John Cena in this transparent stage in his life and his career where he's, you know, kind of able to pull back the, the layers of, you know, what, you know, what how he operated while he was at his prime in WWE, you know. So let's check out uh the moment he's talking about um uh, one of his worst moments in his wrestling career appreciate all love and support we're gonna get right into this man in the wrestling world the scariest moment in terms of that right where you're <clears throat> going i hope they remember me because you've had <clears throat> a ton of returns well uh scariest hope they remember me moment is every single time i'm there and that means when you're there full time mm. like I hope this is a, an area of the world that appreciates what I do, either in, a, in positive noise or negative noise. The scariest moment for me was when they were like, hey, we're going to let you go. Like, it's oh. going to be a few months from now, and, and that's that. Because then then I don't have the chance to be like, oh, I hope they remember me. It's just done. So, Damn. The, you know, the start of my career, the uh, ruthless aggression era that everyone now romanticizes, which we so often do with the past, like, mm -hmm. it was great. It sucked for me. I had no direction. I was asked to be a good guy when I'd, I'd got my experience as a bad guy. So I was asked to do something new. I lost my nickname. I had my real name. So what is a John Cena? I don't know what that is. Damn. I was too stupid to realize that like I could use the two words ruthless and aggression and create a personality. I wish I, I, wish I could get that opportunity now because mm -hmm. I do a lot more with it. But I squandered it. And in doing so, justifiably so, they started me with Kurt Angle and then put me in a few pay-per-views with Chris Jericho. I got to, I, they gave me an opportunity, plenty mm -hmm. of opportunity. It was my miss. And then I'm working, you know, Velocity and on with Damn. matches of no story or very little narrative. Cause just, just think about this. We're talking about John Cena, arguably their biggest company guy they have ever had outside of like hulk hogan and you know stone codes and the rocks like the big one of the biggest stars wwe has ever had and will ever have and to know that when he started off with the ruthless aggression and started off with current angle like they weren't really too happy with him they they weren't even really thinking he's gonna be the next guy that's the crazy thing that is just Think if they actually would have went through with that. Think if Vince actually would have went through with that and let John Cena go. How things would have been different. Just imagine that. And I'm not saying that would have been a good thing. I'm just saying, imagine how things could have changed if they actually would have decided to let him go early in his career. It would have been a completely different landscape. They just need content, and that's, that's where you go to go on to your next endeavor. And I was told, like, they make a winner in spring cuts. And I was like, yo, you're going to be in the winter round. And just Damn. letting you know. And you were told that? Yeah. Straight and then, up. And then wow. the European tour in the fall saved me. <sighs> so that's my that's my scariest moment to know. Wow. Him. They even let him know, yo, we're going to let you go at this point. So just giving you a heads up. And it didn't happen. Wow. At, when I still didn't know my craft. Um, there's been so many performers that have been uh, released from WWE and go on to really have wonderful careers elsewhere and maybe eventually come back, or, but that's uh, fine. I I don't think I would have come back. I don't think I would have done anything else. Wow. That's, <laughs> that is insane to know that John Cena was that close to not being a thing in wrestling, in WWE at least. And he's just said it himself. He probably wouldn't have came back or wouldn't have tried to if they would have let him go that early. That's it's crazy how certain things just play out. <laughs> it's so crazy how things just play out, man. And we we could be having a different story, a different tune if John Cena never 
uh, never made it, you know what I'm saying, in the sense of never made it this long, you know, uh, longevity-wise. If they would have cut his uh, WWE career short early like they originally planned to, who knows how the landscape of WWE would have been. All right, we're going to get into the next one on John Cena on uh, John Cena on why the Rock feud got so heated. I've seen some of this, uh, I believe, on their Rivals, the Rivals little documentary they have been uh, they've been doing. So I, I've seen kind of some of the backstage like interviews they had on why this got so personal. But the reason why it got so heated and personal, well, it, it was a good thing that it did because. It created for some great television. I'm not gonna lie to you, and a great for you. I know that I've gotten 20 years worth of moments with this philosophy. So, the philosophy that you brought up about having control when you're on the field and being in live entertainment, I think, applies directly to that build of that first rock match and the moment when, after weeks and weeks and weeks of just fruity pebbles this that you know getting everybody to be like he's not cool i am cool yeah that one moment happens mm-hmm. you bring up the promo yep on the forearm and it's like and he needed that that's that was the saving thing because outside of we've had this discussion on one of my previous videos outside of that moment john cena which is rare he was getting cooked because now it was all pro rock. There was nothing John Cena could do to legitimately can't kind of get some type of love, like some type of people like, all right, I'm a root for John here. No, he was getting cooked. It's rare that John gets cooked, but he was getting cooked just by the atmosphere, the crowd, everyone being pro rock. There was a lot of people being pro rock, not everyone, but it was hard for him to overcome that. And when he came up, when he got that little that little golden nugget, he used it. And I know, obviously, The Rock didn't like that, but it helped. Because without that, he was getting cooked in these segments, bro. The whole world changes in an instant. Yeah. How did that feel when you were doing it? Did you make the decision in the moment and... Were there ramifications of that? So that's a good question. Uh, And again, that's your perspective. Right. I'd like to think that I gave every chance to speak my best. The thing with our matchup, and I think the thing that some people might not have seen, was it is supposed to be Michael Jordan, LeBron James, both in their prime. Mm -hmm. To do that, in this scenario... You do not have to elevate the rock. Mm-hmm. No. He is an he is and always will be in his own universe. Facts. I don't have to give any more steam to that rocket. Mm-hmm. To make the billing the billing, you need to elevate John. So he's he's spot on with that. He's spot on with that. Because like I said, it was it was the rock. He was everyone was mostly everyone was going to cheer for him. John had to find a way to level the playing field here where it was just going to be lopsided. There was nothing he could do. So him laying that that little notes on the wrist that leveled the playing field that that brought the rock down a notch that no one had seen in quite some time. Like no one really seen him get brought down like that promo wise where there was some truth to it. So I was punching from underneath, but still punching. Mm-hmm. and just looking for whatever. And and once again, Dwayne was doing so many things, like he always does. He splits atoms and makes it work. All I was doing was WWE. Mm-hmm. That's it. And laser-focused and realizing this is the opportunity of a lifetime and realizing also that, like, this isn't uh, – uh, this isn't Mike Tyson, Muhammad Ali. Right now this is Mike Tyson, Peter McNeely. And this isn't going to draw money. Mm. So, Facts. F it. Here we go. Yep. And, of course, there are ramifications, and it led to some some genuine emotions between the two of us. But when it all <laughs> He was began- fucking... The Rock was mad. If you guys seen that Rivals uh, documentary talking about The Rock versus John Cena, go watch it. And I never really realized it, but at the end of that promo segment when John says this, 
and their mics are not like you know i think their mics are not uh hooked up like when they're looking at each other the rock is like he's cursing them out like he he's actually mad like legitimately pissed off now because he's like wait what the you know what i'm saying you kind of went in business for yourself like what the hell but it worked it worked it brought things to an even playing field and to melt away was when we decided the path of the match the day before oh and Dwayne could see how easy wait what did he say when we decided when it all began to melt away but when it all oh, no, no. began of course there are ramifications and it led to some some genuine emotions between the two of us but when it all began to melt away was when we decided the path of the match the day before that's crazy and Dwayne could see how easy, not only how easy I was to work with, but how adamant I wanted to, like, these are great ideas. Let's do them. Let's do whatever, man. Like, I want to make sure you're comfortable. I can do this, but I don't know. What do you think? And then afterwards, mm -hmm. not in the performance, not like being too smart or winking at the camera or like, F this guy. No, being fully invested in, in the whole body of work losing with humility with embarrassment and mm -hmm. staying there and being degraded and humiliated in front of a stadium to give rock his moment the mm -hmm. moment the ice began to melt was right after when the first thing i did was went to apologize to his mom and said being in the business i hope now you can understand i just wanted to sell tickets and i'm sorry if i made you feel a certain way that was not my intention but also from my perspective it was kind of like a surprise party where if i told you the gig mm. i think maybe we would have ruined some stuff she gave me a great hug and told me thank you. And then the next thing I went is to say the exact same thing to Dwayne. And he couldn't have been more gracious. And I know that the build wasn't easy on him. He he has the world in, in, in the palm of his hand. And to come back and be kicked in the nuts by some cheap shot kid who's trying to make a name for <laughs> Oh, my. Just the fact that he he literally went into business for himself. This is why I say certain things like this can happen. And you can still coexist and make things work. That's all I'm saying. It can happen. It has happened in wrestling. We've seen it with two of the biggest wrestling stars in the business. And John Cena went into business for himself. Because he knew he needed to find some way to level the playing field. To get people that much more interested. Because it's all about selling the tickets, bro. Making as much money possible. And The Rock had no idea. His family had no idea. And that's what made it work. And he was still able to make it right. And they put on a fantastic match. I'm just saying. <laughs> you can. I'm just saying it, it can be done. It has been done. You know, it, not everything is going to go to plan in wrestling. <laughs> that sucks. He's trying to give to the business. Like, what is this guy? I get his perspective. What the F is this guy doing? Mm -hmm. I'm trying to, trying to do the business a favor here. But then I explained my perspective to him. And obviously, I couldn't just be like, I'm authentic. I had to prove it out there. Prove my authenticity. And then say like, hey, man, I'm ju I just wanted to pack the place. And I just wanted people to be interested. And I did it the wrong way. We should have collaborated we should and even him saying that also furthers the point of what i've just was talking about the fact that he can admit he was wrong and we should have did this together so you had a better understanding that can make a lot of a situation a situation that much more easier to reconcile the whole adam page and cm punk adam page going into business for himself Maybe at some point he could have been like, hey, I'm sorry for going into business for myself. I thought it would make things a little bit, you know, saying it, I thought it would make things, you know, that much more interesting. Maybe they could have collaborated some more. And we don't even have the whole situation with CM Punk going off. And, you know, we may not even have that situation, but I'm only bringing it up in comparison because even John Cena, even though, in my opinion, him saying that helped the feud, he can still admit. He was wrong for doing that. It helped, but he was still wrong, and he probably should have collaborated with The Rock to go with that route, potentially. That's all I'm saying. So it's it's good that some, he can take accountability for his actions. Even though it worked out, 
he still was able to take accountability. And and that's really all it should be, man, especially if you're in business to make money together. We talked in hindsight. And I should have asked you, what's the best way to make us equals? Instead, I did it myself and in turn yeah. created a, a, a huge space between us. And that was my fault. Wow. Wow. Did you notice the writing on the monitor before you went out there or in the ring, in the moment? I had someone pointed out to me. Oh. And it was... 30 seconds before my music played. That's crazy. So I had something planned and just you know, so threw crazy. it away. And and that's also what I love. 30 about seconds before he goes out there, he gets a pipe bomb-esque information on the rock. And he's like, you know what? Fuck it. That's You got to be cold. I want you to understand, he's going against the rock in a promo battle. You have to have balls of steel to go out there knowing what you know and kind of switch up your whole promo on the fly. That's impressive. About WWE, it it you have to fans can see through the BS. Mm -hmm. If you don't believe in your character, it's what I said to Austin Theory. Mm -hmm. Dude, you are young. You are athletic. You will work for this company. You'll do interviews. You'll go X, Y, and Z. I don't believe what you do when you're out there. And I think we've already uh, heard, uh, seen parts of that one. But, nah, this is great, man. This is fantastic. Um, ah, it just shows the, the, the type of individual John is. He actually did care about the business. He does care about the business. I know a lot of people coined him as the guy that, you know, was ruining the business. And, and that's partially Vince's fault because Vince was just stuck on him being the guy and nobody else really uh for quite some time but you can tell he cared this wasn't he cared about the business there's i think he's the one person that has the most make a wishes john cena i believe he's the most person uh the only person i uh and i don't even think it's just in wwe i just think in the organization history i think john cena has the most make a wishes he doesn't have to do that y'all and it's I can say I wasn't always a big fan of John Cena later uh, in his career only because not recently, but like, you know, when he was winning championships over and over and over and, you know, Super Cena, hit, Super Cena, hit, uh, Super Cena, I can't even say it, uh, his way out of situations that you, it shouldn't be happening. I, I wasn't a big fan, but it wasn't the person I wasn't a big fan of. It was the character and, and how they were booking him, aka Vince booking him. But I can say this now, the dude truly cared for the business. And you can see it in later on in his career. Putting over AJ Styles was amazing. Love that. Putting over AJ Styles was fantastic, bro. Um, people that he has recently put over. And just in situations with like great matches like Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Like really highlighting these guys as you know, the future, even Seth Rollins, like doing the job for some of these individuals. Hell, getting squashed by Brock Lesnar, willingly being okay with getting squashed just because it was to enhance the streak being broken. Like he, he really, he's done, he's put over more people as of late in his later run, which is how you're supposed to do it, honestly. You know what I'm saying? That's how it's supposed to be. You're supposed to leave it better than when you found it. And John has, he got that concept. So this was a dope interview, man. Uh, dope. Uh, um, just look into how John Cena has operated uh, in the past. And, uh, you know, I just think uh, it's, it's definitely dope to see someone um, truly be able to have a legendary career but also have this type of humbleness to him that's really crazy. He's John Cena. He still gives this humble vibe and, and how thankful he is to be in the situation that he's in. So comment down below. Let me know. When you guys initially heard John Cena kind of fight back against The Rock in the promo battles with the whole script on his wrist thing, how did you guys initially react? Like when you heard that and you saw that live, what was your initial reaction? Like, oh, things just heated up. Uh oh, oh, it 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 really got real. Now he, yo, what was that plan? Was that real? Did he 
did the rock really have his his promo on his wrist what's going on here like you know how did y'all initially react to it because i know me personally i was like oh okay john's here he he's fighting back now now we before it, it was just john getting punched down now john is he looks like he's fighting back now we we got something here i'm 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 even now i'm even more interested because now it's like okay what the rock's gonna say because he did kind of get him on that one but i appreciate all love and support you guys showing on channel road to 150k and i'm still getting to the youtube restaurant chair for the world appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one peace